Prequels are so often a sign of creative bankruptcy or cynicism in Hollywood that audiences can't really be blamed for their instincts. But all the same, every now and then a prequel comes along that isn't merely good, it genuinely improves the film that preceded it. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie for What Culture, and here are 10 prequel movies that improve the original. Number 10, X-Men First Class. Even though X-Men First Class and the ensuing run of prequels stretched credibility to snapping point with regard to the mutants' ages, it did a fantastic job of exploring the dynamic between younger versions of Professor X and Magneto, played so wonderfully by James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender, respectively. In addition to lending some much-needed context to their relationship, which in turn fleshes the characters out as we see them in the mainline X-Men films, First Class also brings considerably more dimension to Mystique, performed with aplomb by Jennifer Lawrence, a far cry from her tired work in the role in most of the sequels. In addition to all this, Matthew Vaughan's prequel brings a meaningful historical flavour to the franchise, with a neat 1960s setting that cleverly invokes real-world history, making the Cuban Missile Crisis a pivotal part of the finale. It ain't perfect, but for all of the pre-release hand-wringing about an X-Men prequel, Vaughn knocked it out of the park while retroactively making the original X-Men trilogy more poignant. Number 9. The Animatrix Animated anthology film The Animatrix was released between The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions, but was actually set between the original Matrix and Reloaded, and lends fascinating context to the wider world of the entire trilogy. The nine animated shorts naturally vary wildly in quality, but generally do a fantastic job of unveiling the backstory of the war between the humans and machines, while further developing many of the franchise's central characters. Though the original Matrix in particular stands extremely well on its own, these shorts do nevertheless make its world feel more lived in, and especially make it easier to appreciate what the more uneven Reloaded and Revolutions was trying to do. For instance, the character of the kid from the second and third films was largely loathed by the fanbase, yet the Animatrix's short kid's story brings desperately needed shade and nuance to his characterization. And even if every short isn't necessarily a banger, they're all absolutely gorgeous to behold, albeit in a way totally unlike the style of the live-action movies. Number 8. Final Destination 5 after the aggressively low-effort Final Destination 4, aka the final destination, expectations weren't exactly high for the fifth go-around, but credit to the filmmakers where it's due, they pulled off quite the franchise sleight of hand here. The beauty of Final Destination 5 is that it's a prequel in secret. None of the marketing pointed to the fact that it's actually set in the lead-up to the original film, as is only revealed as a balmy climactic twist. Given that Final Destination Destination 5 brought the original run of movies to a close, it quite fittingly closed the loop of the horror quintet by circling back to the original, ending with its heroes boarding the very same ill-fated plane that exploded at the start of the first film. For a franchise about characters trying and typically failing to fight fate, it was a perfect way to cap things off. And in addition to this, Final Destination 5 also introduced a tantalizing new rule for the series, that death cheaters can steal the lifespan of another person by killing them. Genius! Number 7. The Godfather Part 2 while it's fair to say that only part of The Godfather Part 2 is a prequel, it sets such a high bar for origin stories that it can't not be mentioned in this video. This part sequel, part prequel focuses on both Michael Corleone as the Don of the Corleone family in the 1950s, and the journey of Michael's father Vito from Italy to New York City, where he founded the family's criminal empire. It cannot be understated how much Part 2 elevates the original film, so expertly contextualizing Vito's life as it does, while so brilliantly performed by Robert De Niro, who smartly refused to simply offer up an impersonation of Marlon Brando, but made this younger version of Vito very much his own. More than that though, juxtaposing Vito's rise to power with Michael's personal turmoil as the new Don, especially with that kicker of an ending, is a sheer dramatic masterstroke. Number 6. Furiosa, A Mad Max Saga 
The recent Furiosa isn't quite the face-melting spectacle that Mad Max Fury Road was, but it is nevertheless a tenacious, deftly crafted prequel that makes the fan-favorite title character even more fascinating and awesome. Somewhat ironically though, the strongest part of the movie is the opening half without Anya Taylor-Joy, where Alila Brown portrays Furiosa as a child and teenager, whose tranquil existence in the Green Place is upended by the murder of her mother Mary at the hands of the villainous Dementus. If Fury Road was a pedal-to-the-metal action extravaganza that took only occasional breaths to field out morsels of character development, Furiosa is a calmer, slower prequel, which makes the audience acutely aware of how Furiosa becomes the stoic, hardened warrior that she is when we meet her in Fury Road. While many Mad Max fans were initially disappointed that George Miller didn't give them a direct sequel to Fury Road instead, Furiosa at least deepened that movie in a way its own relentless pace simply wouldn't allow. Number 5. Ouija Origin of Evil now, it's fair to say that the bar was in hell when Universal announced a prequel to their deeply lame 2014 horror romp Ouija, which was near universally panned by critics but scared up a storm at the box office. However, Ouija Origin of Evil isn't merely a no-effort cash-in. It's fortunate enough to be co-written and directed by one of the horror genre's most distinctive current voices, Mike Flanagan. While it's easy enough to enjoy Origin of Evil as a standalone horror movie, focused on a fortune teller who gets more than she bargained for when she introduces a Ouija board into her routine, it does about the most stand-up job imaginable of providing a worthwhile lead-in to the original film. Did anyone need to know the particulars of how Ouija's malevolent entity came to be? No. But that only makes it all the more impressive that Flanagan actually made folks give a damn. Number 4. Rogue One – A Star Wars Story The Star Wars franchise is going through considerable growing pains at the moment, but eight years removed from its release, Rogue One has proven itself to be one of the finest pieces of Star Wars media from the past decade. A prequel to A New Hope was an incredibly risky proposition on Disney's part, with the danger that it would find a way to undermine the magic of the movie that started it all. But against considerable odds, Rogue One actually makes A New Hope even better. For starters, it found a clever way to sew up its predecessor's most nitpicked contrivance, by making the Death Star's vulnerable exhaust port a literal intentional contrivance cooked up by one of the heroes. And beyond that, Rogue One also fleshed out the rebels considerably, far beyond what we saw in any of the original trilogy, painting them as complicated and at times morally dubious characters in the pursuit of the greater good. And of course, it slots into the beginning of A New Hope note perfectly, even with a shamelessly fan-serving yet totally awesome Darth Vader cameo. Number 3. Twin Peaks – Fire Walk With Me the original iteration of David Lynch's Twin Peaks may be a TV series, but this prequel film, which was a critical and commercial dud upon release, has been re-evaluated in recent years as a genuinely vital addendum to the show. The entire appeal of Fire Walk With Me is that it lets audiences spend two hours with Laura Palmer prior to her murder at the start of the series, allowing her to exist as a flesh-and-blood human being rather than a victim merely whispered about by so many others. Within the context of Twin Peaks as a whole, Fire Walk With Me adds so much to Laura's backstory leading up to her death that it doesn't feel like a fanciful For the Die Hards prequel whatsoever, but required viewing once you've reached the end of the original series. And the credit is due as much to Cheryl Lee as it is Lynch, given the utterly heartbreaking tenacity of her performance as Laura. Number 2. Pearl Ty West's X could have quite easily been a solid one-off homage to 1970s exploitation sleaze, but West did the cheeky thing and secretly filmed a prequel back-to-back -back with it, Pearl. Mia Goth returns to portray a young version of X's elderly serial killer Pearl, who she played under prosthetic makeup in X, whose dreams of becoming a movie star ensure her descent into ultra-violent insanity. The fan consensus seems to be that Pearl is a stronger film than X, for while its predecessor was a gloriously brutal gonzo throwback, Pearl stands on its own two feet as an origin story for a deranged killer. With its gorgeous Technicolor style cinematography and especially Mia Goth's towering, Oscar-worthy central performance, 
Pearl is a rarest of prequels that truly feels like an ambitious step up from its already acclaimed predecessor. For a prequel that was basically only made because West was stuck in New Zealand with the film crew from Avatar The Way of Water, it's shocking how essential Pearl feels. Number 1. Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again the first Mamma Mia was frothy but ultimately disposable camp, and is perhaps best remembered for Pierce Brosnan's less than stellar vocals, which numerous critics compared to various breeds of dying animals. All the same, when a second film finally materialised a decade later, and dared to ape The Godfather by being a half prequel, half sequel hybrid, with Meryl Streep now relegated to a tiny cameo, it was tough not to smell the desperation. But surprisingly, the best thing about Mamma Mia Here We Go Again isn't its irresistible title, it's the unexpectedly robust prequel treatment, largely due to Lily James's relentlessly charming performance as a young iteration of Streep's Donna. While the lore of Mamma Mia isn't terribly important, Here We Go Again informs the messy romantic entanglements of the original with charm and humour, while offering up decidedly more consistent musical chops throughout. For a film that seemed destined to be a mouldy, belated follow-up, what an outcome this was. And rumour has it, there's a third film in the works. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how that one goes.